Hi friends, my name is Amanda and welcome or welcome back to Ace Creates. This is my channel where um, I talk about everything that I've been working on over a certain length of time. And we are going to be talking about everything that I have been working on for the last two weeks. I am trying to be more consistent and now that I'm at a spot where I'm back home or um, at a place where I can record a little bit easier, I'm going to be bringing you more frequent updates probably every other week now. And so I do have some updates for you. I am still in Michigan. My background is not my yarn uh, stash. Uh, so I am still in Michigan. My audio is going to be a little bit different today because I am using headphones um, just to make sure that none of the background noise from my family in the house gets picked up. Um, and so my little one's sleeping, my parents are in the living room, and the TV's on, so I'm hoping that we don't hear any of the TV. So that is why I'm using the headphone audio. So apologies if the audio is a little bit different for you today, but we're just going to get through it with it today, and the next time I record I will be back home in front of my stash, and it will be uh, the normal audio that you might come to expect from my channel. So I do have uh, a few updates for you. I don't have that many projects with me just because I finished two while I was here in Michigan and um, I had only brought two others to work on plus an extra skein of yarn in case there was something that I wanted to do. But with that extra skein of yarn, I did uh, come up with and made something and it's the finished object of the video. And that is the Tunisian Twisted Ear Warmer. This is the Tunisian Twisted Ear Warmer. Uh, it's a free pattern by One Dog Wolf on online. Um, it's on her blog that you can, I'll link everything below, um, but it's on her uh, blog. Um, it's a pretty simple construction. You basically do what the pattern calls for to measurement for a head circumference, and uh, then you seam it together with a mattress seam, and um, you then seam the tips together here. Um, and then you turn it inside out and you have this really nice kind of like knotted section. And I'm not going to put it on. Well, maybe I will. That is what it looks like on. It's pretty cute. It worked up really fast. This is one skein of yarn. It's fingering held double because the pattern calls for a DK weight. So um, I use the entire, like literally the entire skein of yarn for this to get a 23 inch circumference uh, head. Um, it's going to be, it's a gift to make. So um, I will not be keeping this. I will be giving this to someone. And um, the yarn is uh, Porter Woolen Company. It's a fingering weight. Again, I'm not sure about the colorway. I had wound these skeins up like probably a year and a half or two years ago. I'd got them at the LA Yarn Crawl and I lost the skein labels. And so I unfortunately don't know this colorway, but I had actually gotten it to originally intended to hold these two colors because this isn't the Porter Rule that I had made my daughter's um, t-shirt in, her Playdate tea light in. And so I had gotten these two to kind of work up together in some sort of shawl, uh, but that didn't happen. And so I decided to use and make this as a gift, uh, gift make for a, a friend of mine. And so um, it worked up really fast. I did it in under a week. I probably could have done it faster, but I was working on another project too. Um, so this is the first and only time you're going to see it on the podcast. Although I could see myself making this up multiple times for people in my life, although probably more for like women. I don't see this being, I mean, you know, but just more of like women in my life just because of this, like not a design here. Although I don't like how I have to sew this up. I just didn't like, I could have done a better job. And I actually had to unpick it the first time around because um, I had done it and 
where the seam um, was then on the outside once I turned it around for the knot. And so I had to unpick that. And I don't know what I was, I just was not paying attention. And so that I had to unpick it, which was a pain in the butt. Um, but I, I did, I did unpick it. And so it's a cute little double layered, um, ear warmer. So really happy with that. I can definitely see myself making more of these in the future. I'm probably going to play around with yarn weight, um, hook size and different sizes based on like craft yarn council sizing um because i could see myself making one for my daughter some other like youngings um some other people in my life it's just a pretty easy make um and you can make it definitely with more affordable yarn um so that you're not using hand-dyed yarn so i don't know i might play around with that um and just see see where things go um but there it is. That is the Twisted Tunisian Ear Warmer by One Dog Wolf. Second project <laughs> is kind of a finished object, but um, I it's kind of not right now. I actually made another one. Um, I was hoping it would fit my daughter, but I ran out of yarn because I was using the yarn that my daughter um, had used, that I had used for her Playdate Tea Light. And I had some yarn left, um, and I got to the point where I seamed it together and then realized I did the same thing that I did over here where the seam is showing on the wrong side. So that was just a dummy mistake of mine. But I did a really good job at sewing this together, and this is really hard to unpick. So I've just put this down, um, and I'm hoping I can get it unpicked. Um, but I just thought it would be a good way to use some scrap yarn. Um, it's actually going to end up fitting like 14 to 16 inches, which is too young for my daughter. So I do have friends that are going to have a baby soon. I just don't know if they're going to have a boy or a girl. So uh, if I can get this unpicked, I will just kind of put this in my gift stash for a future give away. Um, if not, I will probably just, uh, I don't know, I don't know, salvage the yarn in some way and use it for a scrappy project in the future. So that's kind of a FFO, but kind of not if I can get it, if I can't get it unpicked. So I'm not really counting it as an FFO, but I did want to show you that I did make up two, essentially. So the next two projects that we're going to talk about are whips. The next project we're going to talk about is my stripe pipe. So the next project is the stripe pipe, which is a drop shoulder um, sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. And I got as far as I could with the yarn I have. And so this is where I'm at. I had um, actually... You can kind of see I had about two stripes left to go with the yarn that I have here in Michigan. Um, the other yarn is at home. And so as soon as I get home, I'm going to wind up the yarn for um, both the final three stripe colored stripes, as well as the arms and then my other two main color stripes. So the yarn that I'm using for this project, the creamy main color is a botanical yarn. It's their Wool and Folk exclusive colorway from 2023. And then the yarn that I'm using for this project in the colorway or the colored stripes is Random Woolberry Fiber Company yarns. Um, I had picked out, um, I have a lot of single skeins because Back in 2022, um, or yeah, 2022, I had kind of, I was really not strategic in my yarn purchasing. And so I have a lot of single skeins. And so I thought this was a great scrappy project to use a lot of single skeins. So it's all fingering weight, but I'm holding it double to get DK weight. Um, and it's working out really, really great. Like I'm really happy with this project. 
Maybe I should try it on. Let's try it on. I don't know if I can get it. I think I can get it because I'm using my largest cord. Yeah. So, like, I am not making it as oversized as the pattern calls for. So, like, I'm right down here and I know it'll grow because it's all super wash. I know that it will grow tremendously. Um, but I just don't like the way too big or, or oversized sweaters look on me. And so um, I'm really happy with the way this is going to turn out. Um, it'll be just oversized, which is exactly what I want. Um, and I was going for like a um, rustic fall look. Originally, I was gonna try it because there's a lot of like pops of this like cute pink and but I didn't really have anything that really went with all the other colors um I had a very rustic -y, I have a lot of rustic um fall autumnal colors and so that's what I was going for and I picked the blue to go right near my face because my eyes um and then I have a yellow and then like or this like rustic it's called uh bees butt and I think that this one is called drop cloth. Um, and then I have a rustic -y red that will go third on the body and then a chocolate brown probably here and then a green or vice versa. I'm not sure. I kind of have to play around to see what I like best when I get home. Um, but I will probably be bringing this project with me this weekend. Uh, if you're watching this in real time, uh, I will be bringing this to the SoCal Fiber Fest to work on. Um, I'm going both days, not really going with any yarn purchasing. I have too much yarn. In fact, I think, um, I mean, there's always room for yarn, but I'm, I'm on a yarn ban and I'm going to be doing my best to uh, not purchase yarn with my money in 2025 and I'll talk about kind of like my goals and all of that in a future video but yeah this is my um dry pipe and I had done so that's the progress so I'll move the progress marker here so that way the next time that uh we are together you can see all the progress that I have made on my dry pipe I'm really happy with it and I can't wait to see it progress. It's a really great potato chippy project because right now, I mean, I'm working just in the round. I'm past all the flat work. And so I just want to get to the next stripe, which is really cool. Um, I didn't think that I would like it. And this is the first time that I'm knitting flat, something like drop shoulder flat and not just starting in the round. And so this was a new experience for me. I'm really happy with my pickups, my shoulder pickups. Um, I think my uh, sleeve pickups might be a little bit more difficult, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing this progress. And it will, I'm hoping that I get this done before Christmas. I think it's totally reasonable to get this done before Christmas. I honestly, I would have been much further along had I brought that, I probably could have been done with the body had I brought this, the third skein, colored skein. And I almost did. I just didn't. I, I think I just lost track of time and um, didn't wind that skein up before I left or even pack it because I could have wound it up here. Not wound it up, but just hand wound it up instead of my Swift. So I'm really happy to see this project and see it progress. The next project that we are going to be talking about is my Tolsta tea. <laughs> So this is my Tolsta tea. It's a pattern by Rebecca Clow, the Crea Bea, on Instagram. And here I am. You can see the progress marker that I put in from the last time. So I've actually gotten pretty significant progress. It helps because I got to where I could with this dry pipe and I couldn't go any further. So I was able to pick up and really put some progress in on this knit it is a knitted t-shirt it's pretty loose gauge it uses three and a half millimeter needles for the body two and three quarters for the ribbing i've actually i'm at a place where i'm actually past the place but for a few days here i 
took it off the needles. I put it on scrap yarn. You could actually still see the scrap yarn that I, I just kept it in there as a lifeline just in case. But I got to a place where I wasn't sure if I liked the fit. Um, part of it is because I'm also making a size smaller than I normally would. And while my gauge is roughly right on, um, I, I'm making a size smaller. So I'm making, um, the size that corresponds with like the 42 and three quarters or ish bust, um, because I'm about a 43, 44 and, um, just depends on the day. And, um, uh, I wanted something with a little bit more negative ease on the bust. The body still shapes out to be a little bit more flowy, which I like but it fits the bust a little bit more. And so I realized kind of in this process of deciding if I was ready to split for sleeves um, that I might be still like, although I might be able to like pull off a, a large bust here, my arms are still a little bit thicker <laughs> than my bust. And so I was trying to decide if I needed to add some length. So I got through all the the increases on the yoke and um it was at that point where she basically said and in my size I had to do some body increases and not arm for like the last one or two rows um and that was at the point where she said to try it on and then see if you want to add some more length uh and so I decided to add a couple more rows of length and then split for C's um I did block it um, steam lock it because my mom has a steam locker here and so I was able to steam lock it just to like get it to relax a little bit um, I was also able to get out some of the like I don't know if it's called rowing out but where I could definitely see um, I don't know the stitches moving one way or or whatever um, and so I think that this will be okay. Unfortunately, I don't have a longer cord here because it's on my stripe pipe. And so I don't have a longer cord to like try this on while I'm working on it. Um, and it's a really big pain in the butt to um, put it on scrap yarn and then put it back on scrap yarn. It like actually took me a couple days of like just to get the man willpower to Put it back on the needle so I could work on it. That's actually why I started working on the twisted because I just I didn't want to do it. And so um I did because now it's just mindless knitting at this point because I'm on the body and I did split for sleeves. So um I'm about an inch or so underneath the arm. And in total, this project I've done since we last check in probably, oh, I don't know, maybe six inches in total on the body, um, well, on, on the yoke and then to the body in total. Um, so I should be able to make pretty good progress because it's the only one I've been working on for the last three or four days. Um, and it's the only project I have. And we're here for a couple more days and then um, we will be heading back home. Um, and then this will just be my second project, um, at home with my stripe pipe. So these will be still my two main, um, but I will be probably picking up another project soon. I had, um, a designer reach out to me about testing one of their upcoming sweaters. It's going to be a Tunisian raglan sweater that I'm really excited to test, so, um, but it won't come till December. So I still have some time to get, like, try to bust these out. Um, so yeah, I, I just had some trouble with the Tolsta T. Um, I'm hoping that I like the finished pro like the finished sizing. Uh, I think it'll be fine once I wet block it. Cause I think wet blocking will also help a little bit more so than the, the steam block. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know. It just was weird because just the way that some of the increases were, you know, we were doing increases every other, and then we started doing increases every row. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's gonna, I gave myself also when I did the underarm stitches, I gave myself two extra stitches for my size, um, 
which I'm hoping on both sides. So I'm hoping that helps a little bit, gives me a little bit more length or like a um, circumference in the arm. I think it'll be fine. Um, and so, I mean, I don't like it too oversized anyways. And I think that's what led me originally to want to make this a size smaller than perhaps I normally would do. Um, just so that, uh, because I did the T, the play date T in the size for my bust plus the recommended ease. And I like that, um, but I just wanted something a little bit closer to the chest. Um, and so we'll see how this works out, but I will move the stitch marker so that way you can see the progress that I'm making between the time now and the time we meet next, uh, which should be in another two weeks. So I don't have any acquisitions for the video. Again, I'm kind of on a yarn ban right now. And so I'm really trying to design and find projects that fit for my stash. Um, that's why when the designer that I was talking about had reached out to me, I said, I can do it if I have yarn in my stash. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to sign up for um, projects moving forward unless I have yarn in the stash, really work my stash down. Um, and so no acquisitions. Um, but I will be going to the SoCal Fiber Festival. So that's the announcement for the video. I'll be going to the SoCal Fiber Festival, which will be November 23rd and 24th in Pomona, California. Um, if you're there, please come find me. I would love to meet you. Um, I'm just going to be, I'm going with a friend both days. We're going to just be stitching a lot. We're going to check out everything. There is one thing that I will consider purchasing which is a swift because i know there's a company there that's going to have swifts so i might be looking at a swift uh but we're just kind of going to hang out to support i have a friend who's running booths so i'm really excited gabby hello gabby uh please be sure to check out the hello gabby uh booth she's got a lot of handmade bags um and just things that you need in your Kind of craft bag to help you sort and organize your crafts and your craft bag so definitely check out hello gabby um i've got a lot of like my stitch night friends going so it'll just be a great weekend to just concentrate on stitching and getting some an extended period of uninterrupted stitching done so it'll be awesome so i'm super excited this is actually my second year going um and i'm I'm excited to kind of see the evolution. So I will be vlogging it. Um, again, I'm not sure the style of the vlog that I'm going to do. Um, last year, I kind of did kind of what I d I've done for flock, which is like go through, check out a lot of the booths. Although sometimes that gets really overwhelming um, because of the sheer number. Although it's a much smaller at SoCal Fiber Festival. They have about 50 or 60 vendors-ish. I was counting maybe 60 something, maybe 60 to 70. I can't remember, but um, it's up there and Flock had well over 100. Um, so I'm just excited to see just the second year and how um, it is turning out and spend some time with my fiber friends. So if you're there, please come up, talk to me, chat with me. I'm going to probably spend a lot of time at the kind of the community areas because they have a lot of great places to stitch um, and tables to stitch. So I will be definitely uh, out and about there. So come up and say hi. So that is all my friends, all the projects that I've been working on over the last two weeks. I've linked everything below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe or consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I try to post bi-weekly updates of what I'm working on and then I'll throw in an occasional um, extra video, whether that's a vlog. I'm also playing around with some other content ideas. I do, I've always wanted to review the Tunisian crochet hooks that I have. So that will probably be one that I'm going to throw out. I'm not sure if it's going to be this year or in the new year. I definitely will have some kind of like 2024 kind of wrap up videos coming, um, plans for 2025 and what I'm thinking about doing, how I'm organizing things, talking about the yarn ban, that kind of a thing. So 
if you're interested in that, please be sure to give this channel a, a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, friends, and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.